Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck, and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks. And this week, we're going to be taking a look at my brand new pedal board. <laughs> So for obvious reasons, 2020 hasn't exactly been a year that ordinarily would necessitate a new pedal board. Mine sat unused, unloved and unappreciated for the most part in its case since I think March of this year actually with the last Buck and Emmons show. Any home recording I do is with the Helix or with Guitar Rig or with the UA Aux and anything I do with the Aux tends to be more kind of focused on the amp than any effects I'm using. So. If there was such an unimaginable, dystopian, Orwellian kind of vision of a time when a guitarist tinkering with his pedal board wasn't necessarily needed, it's probably now. Anyone familiar with my existing board may well remember that it was brilliantly put together last March on that pedal show by Dan and Mick. Primarily Dan, actually, come to think of it. I think Mick soundtracked the event. Yep. since then has been used incredibly extensively. Countless Buck and Evans shows, Fender clinics, Friday Fretworks, you name it, the board has been at my side and, to be honest, is still as solid as a rock. So why am I putting together a new one? Now, firstly, Martin from Schmidt Array, a name you'll definitely be familiar with if you're a frequent viewer of that pedal show, very kindly got in touch to see if I'd be interested in trying out one of his boards. In this case, an SA450 that actually wins extra brownie points for having starred recently in the promotional video by the gig rig for the incredible new G3. Second reason, and arguably more importantly, the mind-numbing boredom of an impending second lockdown kind of started to wear me down, and to be honest, I just wanted something to do. Joking aside, there were a few genuine reasons that I was actually quite keen to put together a new pedal board. First among which is my love of the Line 6 Helix, especially the effects side of things, which, true to form for Line 6, are arguably second to none. Now, obviously incorporating the Helix into a pedal board obviously isn't that practical and does kind of defeat the point of a Helix altogether. So in this case, I've gone with the HX Stomp, which if you're not familiar with it, it's pretty easy to think of it as a scaled down Helix. All of the same effects, amps, cabs, but you're limited to six blocks and three foot switches. And in this case, the HX Stomp is pretty much the kind of brains of at least the effects side of things. And my reason for putting it on there is it's going to be covering anything from modulation to delays to reverb, any of the stranger effects, which ordinarily would require a lot Lot of extra pedals. Now the way in which I've configured the HX Stomp is that there are three presets which are effects only and I can then toggle through those from the top panel, maybe in between songs or for any relevant moments throughout a set. However the last two presets then are designed so if there's any situation where I need to run straight to the front of house using my board, I can do. Now the first preset is easiest to think of as a mini recreation of my entire rig. Amps, cabs, overdrives, delay, reverb. If everything goes down, I can use the HX Stomp to get me through the situation. The last preset then is kind of working on the assumption that at least my board would still be working, so I could use any drive sounds, any of my favorite overdrive pedals that are within the board, just using the HX Stomp for modulation, delays, etc, etc, and ultimately amp and cab sounds. Now I'm going to make all of those presets available as kind of a little bundle through my website, should you want to check them out. But as I said, ultimately the plan with the HX Stomp was to give me an added level of versatility and flexibility, which I felt was a little bit lacking from my last board. One of the other reasons I was so keen to put together a new board is that, truth be told, I started to feel a little bit stale with the old one. That's not to denigrate the old board or any of the pedal choices themselves, as you'll see there's a lot of crossover between that and this new board. 
But ultimately, after a year, year and a half or so of using it every single day, in some cases, you start to fall into a little bit of a rut. Using the same sounds or the same combinations of pedals for different parts of songs starts to mar your creativity very slightly. And obviously, the old board being so tightly packed, as I said, Dan did a truly incredible job of getting everything that I threw at him in such a small space. The downside of that is it doesn't really give you much flexibility or space in regard to changing in and out pedals. So this new board not only being very slightly bigger, but I've wired it a little bit looser, so should have a little bit more flexibility in regard to changing in and out any pedals that I'm intrigued to try. And one pedal that I've been really excited to get on a board for quite a while is the Electro Harmonics Super Ego, which, if you're not familiar with it, it's essentially the bigger brother of the HX Freeze sustain pedal. Albeit with the Super Ego, you get the effects loop, which, coupled with the patch bay or the connector box on the Schmidt array, really allows for very easy switching in and out pedals of the effects loop of the Super Ego. Now, whether that's a volume pedal to control the overall level of the frozen or freeze sound, whether it's a wah pedal to use as a filter, Hopefully, there's going to be a lot of experimentation and some really cool sounds coming out of that pedal very soon. For the time being, I'm just using it as a straightforward freeze, as you're going to hear in this next clip. But coupled with some of the weirder, kind of more ambient sounds of the HX Stomp, they really do make for very kind of natural bedfellows. <laughs> to the rest of the board we have a couple of familiar faces as you would expect but one or two new ones as well first of which is actually first in the signal chain of course the mythos golden fleece which at quick glance is just i say just here a one knob fuzz pedal but really does toe the line between overdrive and fuzz and to be honest i'm really quite smitten with it it's thick and percussive cleans up beautifully and more importantly for me throws me out of my age-old comfort zone of just kind of going after the same old fuzz face tones really am enjoying it. Next up we have the Cherryatone Centura, no prizes for guessing what that's meant to emulate, hands down the best clone clone I've ever tried, at least in my humble opinion. That's running as a very subtle, very very subtle, always on clean boost, just before we get to the Gig Rig G2. Now the G2, if you're not familiar with it, does so much more than I will ever have the capacity to use it for, its MIDI capabilities and all that jazz, which I frankly don't understand. Ultimately I'm using it as a very simple switcher, keeps everything simple, clean and quiet just makes my life easier and infinitely less tap dancing loop number one we have the snouse black box a brilliant recreation of that original marshall blues breaker pedal from the 90s that i love so much loop number two origin effects cali 76 compressor hands down the best compressor pedal i've ever used it's turning into an increasingly always on thing to be honest especially with single cores in strats just makes everything sound a little bit better Loop number three is a new one, actually, and that's the Mythos Molnir. This replaced the Klon KTR, which, hand on heart, I didn't get a great amount of use out of. It was just being used as a very subtle gain boost in places where I felt like I needed a, a little bit more sustain or a little bit more gain, maybe. 
But in having done a quick AB between the Molnir and the KTR, I infinitely prefer the sound of the Molnir. So I'm intrigued to see what sounds I can get out of that. Loop number four, the Analog Man, King of Tone. No great surprise. Pretty much will always be the first pedal on any board I ever put together. Love it a bit. Loop number five actually is probably one of my favourite overdrive paddles of all time and is really one of the unsung heroes of the board. And that is, of course, the Thorpey FX Gunshot. Incredibly versatile. The calibre setting really gives you some different sounds if you want to blend that in. Gets raunchy. It's smooth if you want it to be. Such a wide palette of sounds available from this pedal and I get a lot of use out of it. Next up, we have the Moor Tremolo um, on the Trellicopter. To be honest, this is probably the one currently redundant pedal on the boards. I think in time I'll replace this with something a little bit different or equally as small. As I said, all of my tremolo sounds are being covered by the HX Stomp. Next up, EP Booster. Basically one louder solo boost. No great surprises there. And the last pedal in the G2 is then the Catlin Bread Echo Rack. I'm a big fan of this pedal. I love the Echo Rack sound, although I think I do prefer the Dorna Prince Boonar. Currently, I managed to break that recently, so it's being repaired at the moment. As soon as it's back, I think that will be replacing the Catlin Bread Echo Rack. Out of the G2, into the HX Stomp. Out of the HX Stomp, into the Super Ego, out to my amp. And the next clip is from the first time I ever had a chance to plug the board in at a recent rehearsal for a Buck and Evans live stream that's going to be coming up, which I'll tell you about at the end of the video. One obvious omission from this pedal board that I had with the old one was the capacity to do wet dry, which to be honest I had a little bit of a love-hate relationship with. Certain venues, certain stages, maybe bigger ones where you're further away from your amp and your amps are further apart, it worked beautifully and the effect was really prominent and it was worth the extra hassle. Smaller stages where everything's a little bit tighter, maybe you're stuck closer to your amp, the effect was infinitely less prominent and I found myself increasingly just running dual wet. Obviously cut all that with the fact that there was one track in a Buck and Evans set which involved a very choppy kind of on and off tremolo sound. If your one amp is constantly running dry, obviously lessens the effect of that. So obviously I could have moved the humdinger and placed it in the chain or I could have moved the tremolo. But as I said when the old board was wired so tightly, even minor changes like that were a bit of a pain in the ass. It's worth mentioning as well that Schmidt Array does come with a lid and a gig bag, although I'm not going to be using that. Every pedal board I have lives in my trusty Peli case, allows for storage of extra strings or leads, cables, pliers, whatever you need to take to a show, but obviously allows it to travel that little bit more safely, whether it's in the back of the van, my car, or in the hold of a plane. Just allows me to travel with it without being overly worried about it. To be honest, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much everything covered. It's just a shame that I'm not gonna get too much chance, I guess, to use this board in the upcoming weeks. But that said, there is a Buck and Evans live stream which is coming up. I'll link that all below should you want to check it out and get a ticket. It's going to be on the 12th of December. We've been desperate to do this for quite a while. It's the first one we've ever done. I'm going to leave you now with a rehearsal clip from the kind of pre-production we did for that show. Hopefully uh, it'll intrigue you enough to want to check out the show. As I said, 12th of December. As ever, I'm Chris Buck. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this. This is Friday Fretworks. Please subscribe, hit the bell icon if you haven't already and I shall see you next week for another episode. Cheers guys, take care and I'll see you soon.